Currently Kirkland. Your source for city news and events in the community. With Erica Sanford at the news desk, stay up to date with weekly news reports on what's happening in Kirkland. Now, here's Erica. Hi, I'm Erica Sanford and welcome to this edition of Currently Kirkland. Every week we're here with the latest in what's happening in our town. The Kirkland City Council on June 7th unanimously approved a new zoning regulation that will allow King County to proceed with the plan to transform the South Kirkland Park and Ride into a community of condos, apartments, retail shops, and more park and ride parking spaces. The Council's passage of the zoning amendments followed two years of public meetings and discussions between King County, the Houghton Community Council, Kirkland's Planning Commission, and the Kirkland and Bellevue City Councils. And the details of this project are so much better. This is going to be such a visually attractive and efficient. The project itself, itself is going to be so much better because of input from the Houghton Community Council. And I don't see any reason we wouldn't, uh, that we would oppose the Planning Commission's uh, additional recommendation. I think that's just makes sense. So um, it, was, it was a challenging process and it's not perfect, but I think the opportunity, as I said in my memo to this, uh, I think that the, the opportunities, the potential, uh, are, are they offset the, the potential concerns and negative aspects of it. And so, you know, that's, that's where we came down on it. The Houghton Community Council will vote on the TOD zoning regulations on June 27th. Approval by the Houghton Community Council would enable King County to collect more than $6 million in federal grants to help pay for the project. The project includes an underground parking garage and a redesigned parking lot that will add another 250 parking spots to the 603 currently available. Demand for the park and ride currently exceeds capacity. Kirkland planners anticipate the added capacity will increase traffic on Lake Washington Boulevard by just 1 percent and on 108th by just 2 percent. The plan also calls for the construction of 250 high-density housing units as part of a mixed-use community which could feature more than 12,000 square feet of commercial space that will be home to retail shops, school and daycare facilities, and entertainment. For 16 months, the city has operated without a permanent public works director, while its managers searched for someone who could fill the void. Their search took them across biennial budgets, state lines, and 50 candidates. In the end, the city found its new director hiding in plain sight. His name is Ray Steiger, an engineer who has served the city's public works department for 22 years. Steiger took over the Public Works Department as interim director in February of 2010 when the city's former director, Daryl Grigsby, moved to California. But he says he's been interested in the position for much longer. Steiger actually applied for the department's top job six years ago. He finished second. So my hope is that when I'm completed, we have uh, a really robust infrastructure that the community understands, that they feel that they are a part of, that their investment in is being uh, spent well, that the rates are high enough that they cover uh, good infrastructure so that we don't have a degradation of our roads or water mains breaking or, or uh, you know, things that could impact the community. The journey to seven Kirkland area schools is about to become safer and healthier thanks to a $1.2 million construction project set to begin when the school year ends. The city project, which is subsidized by a $498,000 state grant, will construct sidewalks, crosswalks, curbs, and gutters on neighborhood walking routes to A.G. Bell, Ben Franklin, Juanita, Lakeview, Mark Twain, Peter Kirk, and Rose Hill Elementary Schools. Aside from safety, the grant's primary goal is to encourage children to walk to school by more directly connecting neighborhoods to their schools. The project will require the contractor to restrict parking along construction sites and to temporarily limit driveway access while crews pour the driveway approaches. Emergency vehicles will have access at all times. One of the things that we've focused on, and that comes from the City Council, and the community down to the, the Public Works Department is trying to really make a safe uh, walking environment for the community and especially uh, for elementary children. 
Residents can find more information on this project and others by visiting kirklandwa.gov and clicking on the Public Works link. Starting July 1st, you will once again have a place to throw that sandwich wrapper when visiting your favorite neighborhood park. The city is restoring limited garbage service to the 22 neighborhood parks that lost the service in 2010. It's great. With two young children, it's perfect to have garbage nearby and it's wonderful. I think it's a good idea. Under the deal, waste management will empty one 35-gallon garbage bin per park per week while performing residential garbage service. To help in the effort, the city is placing these garbage cans near sidewalks. The limited restoration was made possible by the city's nine-year, $99 million contract with waste management. Last Saturday, more than 200 teenagers from throughout the city gathered under the sunshine at Peter Kirk Park to celebrate student art, the end of another school year, and the 12th anniversary of the Kirkland Teen Union Building. This year's Blue Fish Festival featured the five finalists of the Eastside Teen Center's Battle of the Bands. Along with the music, the Blue Fish Festival included a teen art show inside the Kirkland Teen Union Building. Students submitted more than 100 pieces of art utilizing various mediums. Event participants served as the jury for the show and selected their favorite in the categories of Grand Prize Showstopper, Best Technique, Best Non-Traditional Use of Media, and most thought-provoking. The winners earned gift cards to Michael's Arts and Crafts. The Kirkland Kiwanis Club fed festival participants with a hot dog barbecue. Remember, you can access any episode of Currently Kirkland on demand on the city's website, on your mobile devices, and on YouTube. We'd also love to hear from you. If you have any news tips, suggestions, or comments, please send them to kirklandtv at kirklandwa.gov. Thanks for watching Currently Kirkland. We'll see you next week.